Well, good evening, everybody. Everybody's kind of, I want to say, catching on here, but man, who do we have on here already this evening? I have a whole litany of list. I got Pamela and Connie and Jan and Sid, Shelly, Diane. I know there's some more here. Tom, B, Becky, Mary. I can say all my regulars. Hey, there's 15 of us sitting on here, so... Oh, and Trent. Oh, no. Trent's on here. <laughs> I can't lie now. <laughs> oh, hopefully everybody can hear me this evening. Seems like I'm having a slight delay on my end, but we'll see. Somebody want to give me a good thumbs up that you can hear me? I would appreciate it. Oh, hey, Ashley. And some new ones. I got 15 people on here. I think this is like a, well, not a record number, but close. Oh, so we will get started here momentarily. We'll see if we can get a few more to pop in here. Oh, good. I'm always terrified that no one can hear me. That's a blessing to some people. <laughs> oh, well, hopefully everybody is having a wonderful evening. Another Saturday night is upon us, as I say. So I should probably clip this before I lose the thing. But uh, yeah, been a busy day. Accounting day. Fun, fun, fun. Taxes are over. Yes. <laughs> Not my favorite thing. So especially business taxes, but hopefully everybody has been out and about taking pictures. I'm glad we didn't get any snow. I know Trent wants snow. I'm glad we didn't get snow. <laughs> Iowa City got some, but well, we will kick it off here because no one wants to listen to me make small talk. <laughs> adulting way to go yes right diane adulting everybody's favorite so like i said hopefully everybody is having a good night and like i said i got all my regulars here which i love is paul on here tonight mr hosh no oh you got nine inches trent holy buckets well i guess you got what you wanted <laughs> oh well we'll get started here so hopefully everybody can see the good old screen. If you've not been on in a while, I don't talk about it much. If you do want to support the show up there, up somewhere over here is a little QR code. You can scan it and give me a million dollars, a dollar, five bucks. That's all I got to say about that. So finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. I don't know if I do this all the time. And I like to say sometimes it's right in front of you. And we will go through a few tips. I'll show a few photos. I don't claim to be the number one master of saying everything I take is extraordinary, and that is okay. And I forget the new headset will not allow me to drink coffee. Oh, well. I'll just have to wait 45 minutes. So... Let's see, no comments. Okay, and as everybody knows, you can just kind of hop on here and throw in a question at any time. So, oh, uh, who, uh, Corey's on here, I think. I think I saw you, Corey. I feel bad if I skipped over. Yeah, you're on here, Corey. I figured you would be. So, enough small talk. Let's get rolling. So, finding the extraordinary in the ordinary. And guess what? As always, there's a quote. Imagine that, right? Hey, 18 people on here. Awesome. So it takes a lot of imagination to be a photographer. You need less imagination to be a painter because you, you can invent things. But in photography, everything is so ordinary. It takes a lot of looking before you learn to see the extraordinary. And it takes time. I think I was kind of Googling some quotes and that one popped up and I thought, you know what, not like dissing the painters or everything, but hey, if you're a painter, you can kind of make whatever you want. As photographers, I guess we can too, depending on how far we, we want to take it. So we'll roll on to slide number two here, or three, huh? So it can be tough. Um, Yes, it can be tough. So if you're trying, I mean, sometimes you can go to these beautiful places and it's easy, right? You can go to White Sands, Yellowstone, you know, Arches, Zion. It's easy, kind of, really. I mean, everything around you, top to bottom, left to right, is super beautiful. You don't have to really find anything terribly, you know, exciting because it's all exciting. But I think in the way, if you look at this too, 
is if you look like it, say the Midwest, to us, this is a very kind of not boring thing, but we're used to it. We see barns and fences and, and tractors all the time. That's our norm, right? But we go to Zion or White Sands or wherever, Smoky Mountains. That's out of our ordinary. So to us, it's all extraordinary. You know, we're trying to find, you know, a rollway here. Um, you know, but we're, it's for us it's like super exciting it's easier to make photographs i think when you're obviously super pumped and passionate and you're excited because you're in a new place so everything is new you're exploring we come back home and it's like wah wah because we see it all the time but think of it from a, another perspective like so when i teach for paul's photo in the creative photo academy and we're doing intermediate landscape I always get a lot of questions. They're like, where are you from? And I'm like, Iowa. And they're like, Iowa. Yeah. And they're like, we kind of know where that is. And then I start showing them photographs that I've taken. And to me, they're all just, it's normal, right? It's what I see every day. It's what I photograph. It's kind of gets boring after a while. It's not extraordinary to me anymore. And they get all excited. They're like, wow, like how far did you have to travel for that? And I'm like 10 minutes away, if that, um, really? And they're like, really? Yeah. And then they start asking me questions like, how long does it take you to get to work? Two minutes, literally. And they're like, no way. So, you know, it's looking at things in a different perspective too. So like last week we talked about just taking a break, right? And from when you kind of get in that rut. So sometimes you can take a break from the whole landscapey thing or your ordinary place and go on a trip. And for me, I love say going to Zion or White Sands or Mesa Verde this summer. But after a while of being there for two days a week, it kind of gets boring because I've been there. So that helps me come back home and find the extraordinary in what is usually the ordinary for me. And it can be tough. So you just kind of have to sometimes just push through it, take a break, kind of figure as things go and just roll the comments. Um, so, but you know, just know it can be a little bit tough. And learn to see differently, especially when you're in a place that every day it's the same. I take the same route to work. I take the same route home. I find myself many a times like if I don't know where to go to take a photo or like where I'm out exploring, I go to the my normal stopping ground. I, I take the same road from the house down 29th and then I head out, you know, north of east post and kind of keep going there and then i just tag along and go away i go and then i come to find out i'm like oh my god this is so boring well you know why it's so boring because i've been there a million times so i forget that my truck can go other ways than what it normally does so for me sometimes i just have to say okay i'm just going to hit the interstate and go for 35 or 40 minutes north or south and then find an exit in the rural area and then go there and find something I've never been because guess what? It can be extraordinary because it's not the norm, but you have to learn to see things a little differently too. Like I feel like everybody, you know, when you have a camera, whether you're five feet tall or six foot tall or seven foot tall, we bring up the camera to our eye every time. And that's our normal stance. That's how we see everything. Right. But we forget that we can get on the ground. Some of us, it's hard to get back up off the ground. Right. <laughs> you know, or sometimes I hop in the bed of the truck and then now I'm even thinking about, I'm going to take a step ladder and throw it in the back of the truck and get up higher. Right. So it's things like that you can do and just learn to see what's always on that eye level and look at it higher. Like a couple of weeks ago, my friend Jeff and I, we went out to the um, parking garage, completely different cityscape stuff not my normal thing found some really cool images i haven't posted yet because i'm kind of behind on that but we'll get to that later kind of thing and it was different and it was a little hard because it's not my norm so i was like i'm not seeing things as normally but i had to see it differently or see it abstractly or find details and shots that i really wanted so sometimes it's just looking at things differently too and i am actually got some photos tonight. There we are, like this one. I think this one posted tonight. So I bought flowers last week. The wife was in the Dells with the child for uh, spring break. I was like, you know what? I'm going to run to hy get like 30 bucks worth of flowers, see what I can do, right? Well, I was, you know, I, well, I haven't posted that yet. I'll post that next week. I did a time lapse of me setting up my setup and my whole get up and go thing. Um, and me taking a few photos. It's kind of fun. It's on TikTok if you haven't followed me on TikTok. But um, it's kind of fun because I was kind of getting boring for me. It's like setting up flowers. I'm like, I'm not feeling this. 
I'm just not. I'm like, well, that's stupid. I wanted to give up. But guess what I did? I pushed through. And I thought, well, you know what I'm going to do? Who says that I have to literally photograph these flowers as they are? So I went and set up some settings there and took the flowers and I spun them around in front of the camera and moved them around. And I went like close to the lens and back and I did it at different speeds. And I, it almost looks like ICM, but I can't call it ICM because I didn't move the camera. <laughs> I move my subject, but it's one of those things, you know, then I started like, I was just using one flower. Right. And I'm like, Hmm. I'm like, that's all one color. I'm like I got this whole bouquet of flowers that got yellows and purples and greens in it so then i started sticking them together and creating like different color palettes and kind of trying to see what went what kind of what went with each other or what would be kind of fun like bright and dark and then i started doing this thing like at an angle of the camera and i got this thing so it kind of reminded me of a phoenix of some sort the coloring and feathery kind of thing um but again you have to see things differently like i can literally i mean I could pick up that pen on my desk over there and literally photograph it in a sense of how it is as a pen, right? Boring. But I could do maybe do a macro shot and find details. Um, oh, thanks, Pamela. And things like that. So you just have to look at it differently in a sense and don't look at it so literally. Like, who is like, I kind of like to, anymore with barns, I'm photographing pieces and parts of a barn, not the whole thing. I don't know. It's just, it's the way my mind's going. I just kind of roll with the creative flow and see how it goes. And then, you know, I might drive down the road and find, I don't know, shoot it literally the whole barn or whatever. But, you know, just remember, you can see things a little bit different. It isn't going to hurt anything. I think it really open up some creative possibilities. So like this one, this is one that I, I don't know, I found on the computer today. <laughs> um, but this is one that, this is just out of focus on purpose. I put it in manual focus. I look through the viewfinder and I take it and take it and take it and take it to the point where I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, it looks good. And then I did the same thing what I did with the other flowers was I was like, oh, um, oh, yes, we're live, Jeff or Doug. Gee, many Christmases. Yes, Jeff or did. Yeah, 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 we are live, Doug. <laughs> oh, oh, all that sugar from that ice cream I had a little bit ago and the coffee. But back to the picture, um, you know, this is why I just took it manually, manually out of focus and let it go. And then till I got where I wanted it, I was trying to find then different, you know, colors and things because originally I was trying to focus. Oh, thank you, Jan. Um, I was trying to find just like focus on those, like that top right hand corner. It was kind of boring. It's like yellow and green, right? And nothing great. But then you got that blue through the middle and it kind of like zigzags like a stream through there. So again, I could, this is actually a really boring photo, I think in general, outside of the blurriness or well, out of focus, sorry, out of focus. Um, so it's trying to take something, again, it's ordinary and make it extraordinary. That's why we're here this evening, right? Come on. Again. This one, I'm trying to remember if this is an, I, an ICM or just a completely out of focus thing. It might be a completely out of focus thing, to be honest. Um, but it's one of those that, you know, again, looking at it differently. I'm looking at colors. Remind, some of these remind me more of paintings, right? Who knows what I saw re before I took these? You know, I could have looked at 50 bajillion painters, right? Which I don't do, so. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you could get some inspiration from somewhere and pocket it in one of these mem many drawers I have in my head and pull it out for a later date. So again, we're just looking at things in a different light and not so literal. Like it has to be a flower. It has to be all in focus. It has to be everything we want it to be. It means it can be something completely different. Oh, it looks like the Northern Lights. Ah, I like this one. This one's just a tree. It's a tree at Knoll Ridge Park. Um, I went to, usually when I go out to do macro stuff, and then I kind of like, eh, never excites me. So I get bored with it real quick. So then I'm like, ah, you know what? I take the macro lens, I get up close and I do stuff like this. Again, it's finding like patterns or shapes and colors and just trying to kind of mesh it all together. So literally it's bloom trees in the spring probably like May, April, with a blue sky, all right? I mean, we could all stand here, right, and stare at it all day and figure out what it is or what it could be or what it was. Um, and again, I think, hey, if I did that, you stare at it for a half hour and think about it, I guess I did my job right. I think every time I, I do a photo, I want to make somebody at least think about it, you know, make them stop. There we go. 
So lighting. Let's talk about lighting a little bit. So you could do this with artificial. This headset is driving me up the wall this evening. Um, <laughs> but lighting, it can be artificial. It can be the sun. It can be whatever it needs to be. But sometimes I think when you have good light, I mean, we should be chasing good light in general. But when you get to a point where, you know, sometimes that light is the make or break kind of thing, it can add that, you know, the God beam from the sky and light up the barn or the, the flower or the tree or kind of give it that spotlight look. Or maybe it's just the way it's casting harsh shadows and hard light and you know if it was a high noon photo do we normally photograph then not really but when i talked about light a few shows ago i said hey you know i think all light can create a good photograph if we just know how to work with the light that's available so lighting can be one of those things that's going to make that little ordinary thing you know it could be literally just like a like the picture i did of the the lake with a little leaf on it if you've seen it in past shows is you know, to me, I it looked kind of stinky in real life, but then, you know, added a little magic to it, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and things like that, and it just kind of comes to life, and now I have something that's a lot nicer to look at. But lighting is one of those things that can really, I, I don't want to say make or break, but it's a very valid piece of the puzzle, I think, when you're out looking for things. But don't give up just because it's not 5 a.m., so, you know to 10 a.m and you're out shooting and that you know golden hour and all that bs which i'm not saying that's not good time to shoot but i think a lot of us get tagged in, or caught up in this whole it's this time and then we're done and then we have all this downtime and then you have this time to this time just learn to make photographs all part of the day like this one this is one that i could have passed up I was going to because I was like, oh, like it's this is the Badlands right outside uh, Badlands National Park. There's a little prairie museum. So if you're really you can stop there, like go through like sod houses. And if you're really like into it, you can dress up like them and wander around in the heat, which I don't find fun. Um, but, you know, we stopped and it was one of those. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I'm like, nah, it's going to pass. And I'm like, why are you going to pass on it? And it's like, oh, it's harsh light. It's not fun. It's nah, It's not pretty. Well, guess what? I think this is one of those photos where light adds to the story, right? That it's a dead thing, right? It's a head of something, let's call it a longhorn cow, whatever it may be, <laughs> um, you know? But it's one of those things that if this was like nice, soft, supple light, uh, the, right? It doesn't tell a story. You get these really harsh shadows and these, you know, I wish the sky had clouds, but we can't have everything at once now, can we? But, you know, it tells a part of the story. It was hot that day. It was like 90-something degrees, right? So huh. this is one of those photos where I took the lighting added to the story. And then again, I knew it was going to be black and white just because that was part of the story. Or like this one, a little bit of side light coming in. So this was a... Uh, Ah, thank you, Ian. Um, this was out at Living History Farms, yes, back in August. I literally went out there. It was rainy all day long. It was stinky, but I could have gone home or back to the hotel, and guess what I didn't do? I literally was covered in soot by the end of the day, literally. But I sat here for like two hours watching this guy just work on blacksmith stuff. And then he was like, you know, tinging around to this hammer, and then he laid it down, and the light was actually coming through this to the left through the this door the sliding door and it was kind of fun just to watch him and, and we bs'd back and forth and he does all this stuff and teaches uh classes on um god i can't think of it too many christmas don't much matter blacksmithing that's the word you know and it was just fun to watch him so i shot like really tight shots and then like just pieces of tools and i should probably do like a whole story excuse me, a whole series of these because I think it would be kind of kind of a fun way to show that whole two hour span. But it was super fun. I mean, it was one of those things. It was lighting if, you know, it you got that side light. So on that little thing where, ah, thanks, Paul. It's one of those things where if you look down there on the little thing with Jigger, because I'm real technical and mechanical, as you can tell, um, is I can go in there and you get that little hint and highlight and the same across the top of that uh, hammer i do have one where it's the tight shot of the hammer and it's got a little highlight across the top but again it's all about light or like this one all it is it's nothing crazy right but i was in a barn at living history farms up top 
And I walked down the stairs. Like, I was going to go out and go down outside. And, like, I don't want to get all wet and probably fall in the wet grass and roll down the hill. So, then, you know, take the stairs. Well, guess what? You know, somebody left this barn. It's like half a barn door. I cut it off right at the top. But, again, it's light. It's that diffused light coming in. It's kind of bouncing off that little door and kind of in, in, into an entryway. But, again, it's kind of like taking you into – where and what i loved about it is right in the back you got the little fence and the little window in the, the 1800s ish house and i was just like oh i kind of it's a part of the story right it's one of those that for me when i look at it i kind of forget it's living history farms right it's kind of like we want to like i think tell the story and try to find this extraordinary thing right and it's one of those where if you can make people feel that they're not in the 21st century anymore right why not um I know it's kind of one of those fun ones. And then I shot it in square. So I don't know. I, I like square. Oh, well. <laughs> so uh, well, I've only been talking about finding the story, right? So I think everything at some point, everything has a story, right? I mean, if you're into the whole PPA, PPI, you know, professional photographers of XYZ, they have the 12 merits and it's everything from technical to the naming of the photograph and helping tell a story, right? Um, or a feeling. And I think sometimes we know the stories as photographers and that's how we become to think this is the most extraordinary thing we found because we know the story. So when we look at a photograph, we're like, I know the story to detail because I was there. I photographed the subject. I talked to the subject or I was, you know, if it's not a person, I was there, right? As immersed myself in the story. But the viewer, the person looking at this print, I mean, what? You don't stand there on the interwebs, right, all day long and wait for somebody to comment and say, oh, this is a story. And then they're like, oh, that's so much better of a photograph because I know the story. You have to tell the story through the photograph at some point because you're not always going to be there to explain that story. So finding it is kind of hard too it's like sometimes that story is going to be told is it one photograph or 20 photographs or is it a series of photographs at this point or a book of photographs that's going to tell this whole giant story but sometimes that extraordinary thing is the story itself and we have to find some way um to capture it so back i don't know i have one of as we all know lots of projects that i work on but I do one called Pop 500. I was going to do it this morning, but guess what? It snowed all the way down yonder where I was going to go, and I wasn't driving in snow today. Um, if you're not familiar with my Pop 500 project, it's where I go and photograph small Iowa towns that are population 500 or less. I have a spreadsheet with every one of them on it from top to bottom. I've got a map I made that has a number in each county that tells me how many towns in that county are 500 and below and i sometimes just get bored i pick a county and i drive up there and i go i have a software i would say software you can google it but i can put out i want to go to this town this town this town this town this town or that town shortest route and what does it do it draws me a map and says go here 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 to the three hour trip right that's what i do so um kind of where i'm going with this whole thing is down when i did my farmer project down i was down by southeast iowa somewhere i did two farm families in a day and in a small town i killed two birds with one stone really because i did some pot 500 stuff i got my farmer project done but there's it's delta iowa if you ever in delta iowa you gotta stop by the delta grocery store it's crazy. It's literally stepping back in time. It looks like it's closed on the outside. Little old lady runs it. She told me her story. Her husband bought her a grocery store, if I remember right, for something to do. I, right? I guess that's a hobby, all right? And it's like the, like the town. Like It was like Mayberry, man. Like People come in, and the guy's like, I need this pack of cigarettes. He throws a Dr. Pepper on the counter, and he grabs something. He puts it on the counter, and she rings it up on a real old-school ticker tape, right? And then literally says, okay, have a good day. No money is exchanged, and he puts it on account. Who does that these days, right? Nobody. So we got to – my friend Brenda's with me, and I'm not a chatterbox to strangers. And she is, though, and she was talking to the lady, and she told us the story, and I thought, oh, my God, I know the story. So I don't know if I got the photo posted, but I posted it. Of It's just her, so I'm like, hey, can I take a picture of you? And she's like, sure. And I got this kind of 
environmental portrait of her behind the counter and all the stuff piled around her. It's kind of cool. So, but you know, it's finding the story. That's a great story, right? But I have to portray that in the image because if I don't, story's lost. It's just a lady behind the counter, right? So like this one, this one's one, no one has ever seen this. <laughs> uh, there are a few in here this evening no one's seen. Why? Because I keep forgetting to post it. I did this last April. I have a friend who he's like, let's go on a road trip to Southern Illinois. Sure. So we did it for a weekend and we literally just like hopped the highways, well, back roads. And we're driving around and I found this, we found a super cool gas station. It's abandoned. No one's there. If you look at the very top, there's a little bit of, um, I think they're, they're like old light bulbs. They're like colored, like yellow, blue, green, orange, whatever. But it's one of those things is, you know, I got one that's like a whole 16 by nine shot of this, but I ended up going vertical with it because I prefer it that way. Um, but it's one of those things is like, if this was just a building, right, with no gas pump, like if I move to the left or move to the right, it's just windows. Was there cool stuff in the window? Yeah, but it doesn't tell the story. Like, you know, I, when, I hope when somebody looks at this, they're like, oh, like, I wonder what happened to it. I wonder why it closed. I, I, what, like lots of what's, right, can run through your mind, you know, and I wouldn't know that it's a gas station unless I had the gas pump. So when I'm looking at an image, I need to put some identifying details. I mean, yeah, if I have a series of photographs, yeah, I could photograph the entire building of 360, but as long as I have this piece in here, it tells you what it is, because if you didn't see the gas pump, you wouldn't know what it is. Um, hey, Don. Oh, yeah, I oh, run a little late. Well, hopefully things are going better. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things. It's finding details and things like that to add into your photo. Like this one, totally street photography for me. Um, you know, you know where we're at. Well, to a point, you don't know exactly where we're at, but we're at the State Fair, right? Every year I go and photograph the State Fair. It's my gig. I don't know why I do it. It's just exciting. Um, but again, these two ladies are watching kids going on the little, I don't know, little dragon ride, right? Something different, but it's one of those where if I could I photograph this without the drag and the ride in it? Yes. Yes, I can. Would it be as interesting? I don't think so. Why? Because this is part of the story again. If it was just like, yeah, we know there's a ride, right? Because we're all smart. We can look at tracks and figure out what it is, but what kind of ride is it? You know, oh, it is, it's a little roller coaster, right? But what kind, but what I really liked is kind of the ladies who are just kind of like, I don't know when that's me. I don't do amusement park rides and I don't do water rides. So don't put them together either. So for me, I'm on the sidelines all the time watching. Um, and to me, it was just kind of funny. They just, to me, they seem annoyed, but to me, it tells a story on how I see things, you know, two annoyed ladies standing there having to wait for kids in the heat at the state fair. Right. So again, it's just finding details that's going to tell that story. Now, this one, this is different for me. So this year we decided, and this is a new tradition for the Tedford family, we are not going to go to the state fair anymore when it is daytime. Like, we'll go there early, but we're going to go and rent a hotel room in Des Moines, and we go at night. It's so much cooler at night. So we went out to the the area where they do all the rides and stuff and this was different for me because i didn't take a tripod i didn't because i don't want to deal with eight thousand people on a tripod but so for me it was shooting things differently it was trying to tell a story now i can have i probably got 10 photos i could put together and i'll tell the story of a day at the state fair and i got a picture of my kid chowing down on a corn dog that kind of stuff you know and all that kind of fun stuff so again this is one of those where it's different where i can have that photo early in the day where it's bright and kind of go through these and get to the point where it's night and say hey i told part of the story like this is the whole day oh they were there the whole day or you're photographing everybody i would love to spend literally 12 hours a day for two straight weeks and never leave the state fair I would love just to be like a photographer at the state fair because there's so much fun stuff that goes on that I think there's a lot to capture. If you're into like street photography, I am not so much. I don't like photographing people when there's like onesie twosies on the street. It freaks me out because people get really crazy these days, but when you're in a group of people, nobody knows what they're doing. So, but this is kind of fun. You know, it was one of those different, different vibe. Oh yes. Thanks Don. So think photographs, not snapshots. If Trent hasn't been bored and left yet, I should get Trent on here and we should talk about this more in depth. But I think we need to learn to create a photograph versus a snapshot. So a photograph to me is one that's going to be well thought out. 
There's a story behind it. There's composition. It's thought. We didn't just say, pick up the camera, click. I think that's what a lot of people do is they pick up a camera, click, one done, one done, one done. That's it. Like nobody works through the process. It's like we feel like we capture one and we're done. Why do that? So you have to think along the lines of thought out stuff. I'm not saying you have to sit here and have this big whiteboard and plan every shot out. So you're going to come across stuff that's exciting and extraordinary. It's different. But when you come up upon that scene, we need to look at it and, and a, with a, an artist's eye and decide what techniques am I going to use? Do I need the tripod? You know why? Or like I do it sometimes, I get lazy, and I'm like, uh, I gotta, I don't want to go any higher on the ISO, and it's not that extraordinary. I have to take a photo. So I like, if I don't go higher ISO, I'm not going to get a fast enough shutter speed, but I don't want the noise, so I just bypass it, right? Well, then that's stupid, right? That's just dumb. Why am I out taking photos then? So it's one of those things is where you need to just, just think it through. Look at it in a sense that, you know, I'm creating a photograph. I hate the word picture drives me nuts. I use it all the time. I don't like the word picture because picture to me seems like snapshot. It's quick. It's a picture, right? Well, who's it? I hate it when people are like, can I see your pictures? No, they're photographs. <laughs> to me, photographs are more thought out. It's just like, I. It's somebody's like, oh, yeah, pretty pictures. Two things I hate. I hate, I don't care who it is. Like, oh, it's pretty. Oh, okay. That drives me insane. But when they say pretty picture, then I'm really all bubbly and inside <laughs> um, but it's one of those those things is just think it through i think we need to look at it from a sense of an artist's eye a process you know did ansel adams create snapshots no henry cartier brasson no they didn't create snapshots to create photographs any Leibowitz doesn't take snapshots so to me this is a photograph to me. Why? This one's a really freaking long thought out thing from the whole entire beginning to end. Again, this was Glacier National Park. It's one of those that's like, ooh, there's what I'm looking for. I saw the contrast with the dark where we were it was in the dark, uh, whatever, forest, um, rainforesty type side of the park. But it was just for some reason that green there was popping and it was a little brighter there for some reason, so I photographed it. I liked it. But then when it came to post-process, I, I think I've got about 18,000 versions of this. And it was like, how do I want to portray this? Do I want to portray it in the realistic way I saw it? Which is, yeah, it's brighter in the green part of the tree and the background's a little darker. You know, but yeah, did I dodge the bottom of the little tree? Yes, I did. Why? Because we can. You know, but it's one of those things that, again, I thought it out in the beginning, like I did take. 10 or 15 steps back and say, okay, I looked at the scene. How do I want to frame it? What's my composition going to be? And I thought it through and I took it in square and I took it in 16 by nine and I took it in a regular, you know, formats and all of it. So I thought all these different pathways through it. And I knew maybe I didn't think it was going to be black and white. I thought it was going to be more color. And I was like, yeah, I don't like it in color. So I skipped on it. It sat there for a week or two. And then I came back and it sat there for a couple months. And then recently I had nothing to do. And as I always do in the winter, I pull up photographs and I edit, edit, edit. It's not how anything to take. And this is the one I got. Look, so much, I should get this printed. Um, I really should because I would. I don't have any place in my office to put it. Um, but it would be one. I'd like to sell it. Uh, I think it's one of those. Oh, Ashley said, I had a pic from Glacier that was so moody and I couldn't figure out how to portray it in the final image. I came back to it a year later and got it. Exactly. I have done that myself. Sometimes, you, some days you just have, all the stars have to align and not all the stars are going to align at once. They may align to take the photograph, but when it comes to the post-processing, they're still a little off kilter. And eventually one day those just kind of things percolate and come across. And, oh, yes, Jan, I agree. That would look great on metal with a float frame. Black float frame, like half-inch float frame. See? We're thinking this out through even farther to the point of presentation. Um, but, you know, it is. It's one of those things where things are just going to, like, click, click, click. It's going to, like, coffee. It's going to percolate all the time. And it's just one of those things is, Remember, it's tough. Not all this is going to come in at one, one time. So put the camera away, explore first. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, one of those things. Oh, one second, Tom. 
So Tom says, I was asked to help go through my wife's grandpa's 10,000 slides. And we went through everyone. Yeah, everyone helping only wanted to keep pictures with family members. His artistic pictures were all passed by. I feel I need to print my pictures. I want to last. Yes, print, 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 print. We don't print enough. I mean, in my office, I have what? One photo I printed to two. You know, I mean, I would have the whole house filled literally with images if I could. Um, but yeah, print. I mean, even if they're little ones, like Jan knows that we get together in our little photo group every quarter and we print. I just was cleaning the office today and it's a mess again. Uh, but I was doing accounting. That's my big thing this year. Like, I'm going to understand my business numbers like never before. And I was a print and fool today on receipts and organizing things. And I found my pile of prints that over the last, I don't know, two years, Jan, that we've printed, I've given a few away. But again, it's one of those things is you're creating photographs, why, right? Why not share them with the world? So putting your camera away, explore first. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I think sometimes when you get to a new place or even a normal place is the first thing we want to do is whip out the camera, pick a lens and start shooting. I, I guess you do have a big pile, Jan. I love your stuff anyhow. It's a good pile to have, right? Prints. Um, but we get into this like mindset of... Oh, like, I need to start taking pictures, like, right now, shotgunning it or, like, blasting everything over here, over here. and But we don't explore anything. We just don't. And that's what we need to do is because I will tell you, if you're trying to find the extraordinary in the ordinary, you're going to overpass some things because it's, like, maybe it's just my mind, my ADHD brain. Because I am literally, like today, I went to look at an EIN number thing, and then I was on another tab, and I was back to accounting, and then I was like, oh my god, there's notebooks over there I gotta get rid of them. That's my brain. Um, it's like a bee's on the outside of a beehive. <laughs> um, but things are always over. So sometimes I have to remember to, like, when I see something, like, super, like, ooh, ooh, I gotta take a photo, I need to just, like, yeah, have the camera ready, but I need to look at the scene. And this next photo is the one that's on this background. This is not my normal thing. And this was when I took my trip to China. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, it's actually my trip to uh, um, Disneyland. Or sorry, Disney World, Disney World. There's a difference. Um, Disney World. So this is when Emma was... God, we went to Disney twice now. We went in September. So it had been four years ago, right before I started uh, with Second Story Promotions, after I quit Photo Pro. That April, we went to Disney World. I thought it was going to be the dumbest thing in the entire world. And I was like a kid in a candy shop. Um, it was a lot of fun. I, I want to go back again, but the wife says no. <laughs> um, but this is one of those where I took my pen F. Poor, bless its heart. I got rid of it. I wish I would have kept it. But it was a digital range finder and it was super, you know, it was real light. I had it on my shoulder all the time or slung over to my back. And it's when Emma was little. And we were into Disney princesses. So guess what we did? We went to every Disney princess we could find. And this was in the big giant ball place, uh, Epcot. And this is where we saw Mulan. And we waited in line, waited in line. Well, I wandered around and I looked up. Because sometimes we forget to look up. And we definitely forget to look back. You've heard me say that before. And it's one of those things where I looked up, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. So now I didn't have a camera, right? I didn't have a camera in my hands, nothing to preoccupy myself. There's no buttons, no dials, no shutter speeds, no apertures, no ISOs to worry about. It was just me, myself, and I, and my eyeballs trying to find something to photograph. And I looked up and I was like, ooh, and I've got a bunch of shots of this of different, you know, what I liked about it was the colors and kind of the patterns and stuff, but Again, if I would have just gone right up and shot everything at eye level, right, and worried about my camera and all that stuff, I probably wouldn't have caught what was above me because I didn't take time to explore. Like this one. This is a good point of you need to freaking turn around every once in a while. So several years ago, uh, my wonderful, wonderful, um, oh, yes, yeah, not like it. I don't, yeah, never try to put anything center, Jan, I don't, but um, not saying you can't. But my good friend Larry Gills and I went out to, uh, it's not Devil's Lake, it's the one near Chicago, it's got all the waterfalls. I know Jan probably knows it. <laughs> um, God, I can't think of it. Somebody will tell me if I don't come up with it. But we were out walking down these trails, and again, I tell people, turn around every once in a while. 
and guess what I did? I turned around and ooh, look what was there. We crossed the bridge and there are created black and white. Um, it's just one of those things is sometimes you just need to turn and frick around and explore. Because guess what? I didn't have a camera jabbed up to my eyeball anymore. It was just, I was out walking, trying not to fall down and break an ankle kind of thing. So it was one of those things that I turned around and looked. So again, explore, look around, don't fiddle with the camera and just look and see what you can find. And every once in a while you go down that trail and I do it a lot. And now I'll go 20, 30 feet and I'll turn around and look. I'm going to go another 20, 30 feet, turn around and look. Why? Because sometimes we, we get in that zone of what's out in front of us all the time that we forget to what's back here. And that's where the extraordinary is. Again, this was another one, Living History Farms. I didn't have the camera up to my eyeball. I was kind of like not impressed with this old farmhouse that I was in, but I wandered around and Hey, Peggy, yes, better late than never. You can all, yes, you can always rewatch. Um, but I circled the house because that's how old farmhouses are. They all lead in a giant circle. And I wandered around like three or four times. And every time I went into a different room, I saw something different. And then all of a sudden, I saw this wonderful organ, piano, whatever the heck it is. And this is part of telling the story. If you could see this bigger, um, it's got, I think something about the 4th of July or some patriotic thing. And it was a little after, I don't know when it was, there was August, but again, it's telling a part of the story, right? And I could have a whole litany of photos with this, but this was just one. It was a detail shot. I'm looking at, if I would, if I would have had that camera up to my eyeball the entire time, I probably wouldn't have taken anything in there. Sometimes I do that. Like I put the camera up and I just look at things like, and nah, 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 like that. No, no, no. And then other times, like, then I take it down and I kind of look at it. I'm like, oh, okay. See, I was seeing this at 70 millimeters and maybe I should look at it at 50 or 24 or 14 millimeters or something and then try it that way. So I don't have that stupid thing jammed up to my eye. So, right, who wouldn't say that there'd be something of me in abstractly, right? Look at it abstractly. So, again, kind of like the flowers and waving them in front of the camera is maybe start finding pieces and parts and trying to figure out how can I make this extraordinary of an ordinary item. Like maybe it's, I don't know, like colors on a marker board or something, whatever it may be. Well, could I photograph the whole like marker board? Yes, it would be boring. But once if I did a excuse me, a macro shot up like super, super close and just got like the little etchings or whatever, maybe, I don't know. So let's look at some photographs. So this was one no one's seen yet. Um, it's been sitting on my computer since Zion um, back in May. What caught my eye at first was the rocks because this is actually a rock wall and it's water that's run down and it's at varying like degrees of, where it was dry, some has been there longer, like there's minerals on the wall. And I really loved the photo because there's lots of colors, but they kind of almost all blended together. And then again, all the stars aligned to take the photograph, but I didn't know what to do with it post-process. So I went in and did all this fun stuff. And then I realized one day I was like, I don't like it. So I went back. I still don't like it. Went back. I'm like, ooh, black and white. And, you know, it's finding something different. When I, for, I mean, when I look at it, sometimes I'm like, well, I don't even remember the photograph when I was like this big on my computer. And I'm like, is that a road? I'm like, oh, great. It looks like a drone shot straight down of like roads and ditches to me. But again, gets the mind turning. Again, who I see him, right? We wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see one of those from me. But this is one of those things where it's literally a boring field. There's nothing of interest. There's no barn. There's no main subject in it. Nothing to draw the eye into it. So then I have to start looking at things abstractly and decide the contrast and color in the sky and then the field, you know, like the colors and patches of color. Like if I blur that through, like if I, you know, if I do a fast pan with it, is that going to blur it enough? Is it going to melt those colors together? And I have to start thinking in a different way. And guess what? When we start thinking in a different way, we start finding that extraordinary because it's not ordinary. It's not a boring field. I would like, I should, I should do more like before and after shots of this stuff, because to be honest, this would just be like wah, wah, kind of a boring shot. Um, come on. Oh, sorry, my child's room is above us. It's like she's fighting off a grizzly bear with a frying pan. Um, thank you, Paul. Um, and this one, like, what could it be? This is literally a tree out at Wikia Hill and a spring day, bright blue sky. And I went vertical while trying to do the squiggle. 
and I got about 40 photos of this. And it's one of those things that, you know, I have to see is that, is that, you know, the color is it going to streak and is this going to blend? And, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. And what really sucks about ICM is you go to do it and then you find out that you nailed 99% of it, but it was overexposed. Well, you're not going to get the same photograph twice or it's too dark and you're not going to get it twice. So it's one of those things that you just cut your losses and call it a day, but you got to see things differently. Like, especially in the spring, like as things start popping a little bit more color, things like that. And I go out, I'll probably do more ICM because it takes the boring browns, more brown, 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 <laughs> you know, and kind of make it all together and color, you know, because like sometimes you got to take the browns and a little bit of the, the other very little color out there. Or if you can find that pop of color with a sky or something, how can we turn that in uh, into something? It's different. Don't overthink it. So I think we overthink too much. One, because that little black box we use all the time makes us overthink that we think that the more gear we use, the more filters and the more post-processing and the, the more of everything we do is going to make it a better photograph. No, I don't believe that. Like there are some people like, you know, like, Oh, I have to like really just like use every filter. Like I'm going to stack a polarizer in neutral density because I'm going to do this and this. And then I'm going to sit here and just because you sat there and edited it for four and a half hours straight, doesn't always make it an extraordinary photo. Now, if the magic is in there, great, right? Um, Tom, oh, these look like Stan Wilderspan paintings. Oh, I'll have, to, I'll have to look that up. I am not. Oh, he's a mating artist from CR, right? Imagine that. Um, I'll have to look that up. I am not familiar with him. Thank you, Tom. But that is one of those things where we overthink. And when I overthink, then all hell breaks loose. Because I overthink it. Like, let's put my business taxes, for example. Oh, I overthink that stuff too much. I have had I have a, a mentor that is an accountant. If you're not familiar, if you're into this business thing a little bit, you need to look up a score. S-C-O-R-E, mentors. It's totally free. This lady knows everything about there is to know about accounting. I don't understand accounting. I don't understand charts of accounts. I don't know. I struggle and I'm like, oh my God, it's a USB cable. That's not an office supply. That's camera gear. And I overthink and I overthink and I get overwhelmed and I stop. Same thing with the camera. When you overthink things, it's overwhelming. We get confused. We get disgruntled. We get mad. We're like all hyped up inside and we just close up. That's what I do. That's me. And so don't overthink it. Sometimes just let it flow. Just let it flow. Um, I, I, my brother-in-law is a tattoo artist. I don't know why I'm telling this, but I'm going to. So he's a tattoo artist. And I thought I'd get another tattoo here. I have one over here of a camera, if you don't know. But here's a Willy Wonka quote. It, it's what I want. It pretty much says, like, pretty much one of his famous quotes of just saying, dude, just be more laid back in life. Um, I need that reminder every once in a while. But again, don't overthink it. And Why? Because things can just be simple. Oh, I already talked about turning the hell around, right? Might as well. But again, turn around. You need to because it is different. Um, there's going to be something back here that you're not going to see. Or even look down or up or over here. Because guess what? You don't do it. And we're looking at the whole world at this level and this width. It's going to be boring, right? Because we see the world at this angle and at this height every day. So maybe, you know sit down on the ground or there's times that I've been like photographing a flower or like I crouch down to shoot something. I'm like, Ooh, wow, that's different. And I'll notice something else within a, you know, another photograph when I'm photographing something else because like this one, this one, no one has ever seen. No one has ever seen it other than me, myself and I, you know how old this photo is, this photo I took back when we went to Disney, this is a Ponce de Leon uh, lighthouse down in um, Florida. And guess what? This was another one where I turn around and I walk up this huge flight of stairs. Oh, thank you, Diane. And I was like, you know, I, we've all seen the pictures where people shoot down to the spirally staircases, then up the spirally, spirally staircase, right? We've all seen it. And it's one of those things where... You got to look at things differently, but I love the shadows and all that. And this is one I edited and it sat 
and it's moved around from hard drive to hard drive, computer to computer. And I thought, you know what, let's show it to the world tonight. But again, it's something different. It's, you know, it's not the typical outside of the lighthouse. It's inside, the lighting's different, things like that. Oh, love the light and shadow. Thank you, Jan. This one, this was one where I turned around. I actually got this one printed on a metal print. It's on a 16 by 24. It sits over here on my wall. It's on a metal print, but it's matte um, in a barn wood frame with no glass in it. Uh, this was one that I turned around. I was going back to the car, so I went up the road ditch, holding on to this, literally this fence, get up here. I'm photographing the barn on the other side of the fence. I walked down back through and I just as I go up the other side of the road ditch I'm thinking something tells me my gut says turn around dude turn around so I turn around I'm like wow that's kind of cool but then something yeah we know what the subject is it's the barn right it's part of the story but I focused on the fence versus the barn again turning something that's just kind of boring how often do we we look at the scene around a barn and photograph it we always want to make that subject the main part it's still the main piece it's like dead center right you can't miss it even though it's out of focus or this one another turnaround moment um and i always when i'm in the humanos i always drive around and look at the old cemeteries and see what i can find and one night the light was beautiful i turned around had this wonderful wonderful fence and that nice light coming through of the shadows so I've kind of talked about this as a different one of, you know, like different vantage points. Don't stay at six foot, you know, or five foot or whatever your height is. You know, get high and get low, right? Like get on the ground. That's why we have those tilty screens now. There's articulating screens. You don't have to get on the ground, tilt it down and hold it waist level. You know, I've done that before where I've wanted to take a picture and I don't want anybody to know. So I do the old, put it at the hip and pop the screen out and I look at it. Now it's super cool with mirrorless as you can touch it. Because when you bring the camera up to the eye, everybody's like, woo, on guard, right? You're taking pictures. So get higher, get low, find a different vantage point. Like this guy, Living History Farms, a pig. This was probably the stinkiest photo I've ever taken. Well, second stinkiest. And guess what? Stinkiest photo number one and two were both pigs. Um, but, you know, I was trying to actually photograph him, like, through the the fence and he he kept covering his eyes up and sticking his nose through it so i thought well okay it's not i'm not getting what i want so i'm just going to photograph what's presented to me so i thought it was kind of fun like again it was a stinky photograph it was like had just rained too so the pin was all sopping wet and muddy again state fair different angle that last one, I was on kind of the same level with a little bit of height on to the pig. This one, I was down low, crouched kind of, um, shooting the Ferris wheel. You know, again, clouds, that's what caught me, sunset. So add the magic. Well, what do I mean by add the magic? Well, that's post-process really so sometimes your extraordinary is going to come into you have a very boring photo and sense and you're going to come in and you're going to magically bring this through with post-processing now don't think that just because you have a poopy boring photograph it's ordinary that if we add a bunch of saturation and clarity and contrast and all this crap and preset this and preset that and add this wonky filter to it that's going to make it extraordinary i think you still have to all the other things we've talked about are pieces and parts of what we've spoken about at it this is another piece of the pie so this one here this was kind of this was devil's lake with mr larry guilds again and what caught my eye was this little pool of water was spinning these leaves and i was going to put up the tripod and photograph them but what really brought this all together was post-process you know i'm i love it i still it's one of my favorites i don't get a lot of photos that kind of hang out in the past years that kind of follow me but this one i do love just because of the color got a little bit of lighting on those leaves and i think i had a polarizer on it so i got the glare off the water but again it's something different you can kind of feel the flow if you really look at it it kind of like loops kind of around and spins to the middle if it wasn't for post-process, it'd be different. So this one, um, if you are familiar with tilt-shift lenses and the whole tilting and shifting and so on and so forth, that you can get this weird thing. This is all post-process. So I, um, this is actually a, I got the whole like Silver Effects Pro, Color Effects Pro, that whole suite of photographs. And there's one in there called Analog Effects, and I use it very rarely. It gives you filters and wonky 
ness of making things look like tin type photos and all that. This was the tilt shift kind of effect, but this was a turnaround moment. I don't know why I photographed the flowers. It was very boring, but it was the post process that kind of brought it through because I could play with the, you know, filter and kind of, you know, blur out certain parts, bring certain parts in, but again, makes it a little bit more interesting than just a pile of flowers. We are almost done. Or this one, same thing. Now, the depth of field here is all me in camera, but the vignetting, the black and white toning, that is a starting point of the software and then me moving sliders left and right to find that happy medium. So for me, again, this is one where I tell people, everybody wants to photograph pretty flowers. Things can be dead. Things don't have to be pretty. I also thought the post-processing on this kind of brought that old, decrepity kind of like look to it. So part of the story, too. Oh, so we're done. We're like a little, well, we're not really over. But so what is coming up? So this one, um, if you, you know, as always, I'll go through the next ones. So we've already done that one. So next week, we're going to do a compositional technique. So just a real quick kind of overview of composition never hurts i'm kind of excited for finding your uh, photographic voice that one will be fun this is why i will need help on april 15th if you want to start sending me your questions um send them to me at justin at tedfordphoto.com um or you can go actually go out to my website and there's a contact form or there's a button in the top right hand corner it says let's chat if you want click that and i should bring you to the contact form and you can put in uh questions i'm hoping i have so many questions that i just have to randomly draw them before the show starts but if not you get to just look at me stare at the camera for an hour and not speak so because we're gonna i need your questions and i don't care what it's about i mean it should be photography related but <laughs> but I, I don't know if anybody wants to know my opinions on anything else in life but you know, any questions, post-processing, how do I do this? How do I do that? Or how did I do this on this photo? Or how should you do something? Let me know. This one I'm really excited for, too, the art of mastering long exposures. I don't do enough of it, but I do love it. I was going to go downtown today because there were some nice clouds, and they're kind of moving a little bit, and I had an idea. But, again, all the stars didn't align. It's all up here aligned, but not out in reality. So that's going to be a long exposure one, too. And then this is where I'll need your help again, April 29th. We're going to do a live photo critique of your photos. Um, as the time gets closer, I'm going to try to see if I can get a link to my Dropbox um, somewhere where you guys can just upload your photos. Up to three is my plan. I hope to have so many photos that I can't get through them all. But I'm just going to go through. I'm hoping to find somebody else to kind of go along with this and tag along and say, hey, because my opinion is one opinion. You can have 12 judges on a panel and they'll all have something different to say. So I want some different um, views. So I need to find somebody to come up and help with that. That should be fun. Then in May, we are going to do the Maverick method. It's exploring unconventional camera gear, things that I use that you don't find at a camera store and other things you can do. So then this one I'm super, super excited for. If Trent is still hanging out, Trent is going to be a part of this one, uh, Framing Life, a personal perspective on photography. So if you weren't here previous on the shows, I'm going to have four photographers, two professional photographers. Trent said he would do it. Um, why can't I think of the other one? Oh, uh, Mr. Kent Sievers, uh, former Omaha World Herald photographer. Met him back all the way in like 2003. Does a lot of street photography. I think he moved over to like healthcare. I was doing some stuff for there. I don't know if he's retired yet. Um, but he's an awesome photographer. Um, Kent Sievers, he's on Instagram. Lots of fun, funny kind of uh He's very talented all around because he's a photojournalist. So he could do everything from food on the fly to street photography. Super cool guy. Um, and then Trent's going to be on. And then if Jan has decided to, Jan, I always wanted to, what I wanted to do. Oh, sorry. No, I have four. So I've got one of my students too, a former student. So I wanted somebody who does it for fun, like a hobby, which is Jan, if she wants to do it. Not that I'm pushing it jam but if you want to you're still there to do it and they got dan uh, mr dennis dennis perry he's out of um, redondo beach i think that's where he's from is redondo beach california he took my class at paul's photo that man has a way of seeing things differently in color kind of like i don't know she's just got a way of seeing things so i wanted to bring him on for a completely different look and then obviously trent and kent 
um, if they're still going to do it. And it's going to be talking about like their personal perspective on photography. And I'll have a couple of questions I'm going to send them. So everybody gets a 15-minute block. I'm going to have everybody send me over three or four photos of their favorite, kind of explain why. And just I want you guys to hear other people than me because there's more people in this world than me. So then I don't know what – well, that's May 13th. I don't know what I'll do the following week. I still got to plan those out, and then I'll be on vacation the end of May. So, But that will be fun, I think. And if anybody's ever got ideas for a show, let me know. Then I don't have to go off this list over here or up here. And then I, because I, I do this for you, not me. So um, it gets, I just want different things. I'm always afraid I'm going to run out of inf or ideas. So, and the last one, as always, when it pops up, thank you. I, like I said, I will always show up here every Saturday night, as long as you guys show up for Saturday night. And I think I'm, on average, I was looking up there, the little eyeball tells me how many people are on tonight. This is another good night, about 20 people. So if you've loved the show, like I said, you're more than welcome to scan the QR code, support it, $1, $5, $100, $100, I don't care, whatever you want to do. Don't have to. Again, that's all I'm saying about that. The other thing is, you know, you don't have to, like, do the money support i think the biggest thing you can do is share it share it with the other photographer friends all this stuff is on youtube to watch i'd rather have you guys sharing the knowledge with everybody you are welcome don and jan thank you paul um you know but get out there and kind of just you know see the world from other people so you know i thank you guys for all doing it so if you guys can share that so other people can see it that would be awesome you know or sharing photographs, whatever. You are welcome, Connie. So, oh, I got an idea. I was going to do it last week. I was going to do it this week. I don't know. I thought about, God, I need something else to do. But I thought about each week giving you guys, like, something to photograph, like, abstract. And then you guys could all send me your photos. And whatever the one I love the best, I don't know why, I'll post it at the end of the show and talk about it. I don't know. If you're interested in it, let me know. Oh, thank you. We had a lot of people on here. Becky, Connie. Yeah, like I said, we had 20 or so. Mary Lynn, thank you. So, again, um, if you got ideas for shows, things like that, let me know. So, thank you very much. I'm going to call it a night. It is 9.03, and you guys are probably tired of listening to me blab. So, have a wonderful evening. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, and keep photographing. So, have a good evening. Thanks.